Hey y'all, how y'all doing? So y'all already know that I'm here to talk about the interview that Queen Sheba did with Martell. So let's just get right into it, but not before I say that everything said in this video is alleged and is my very own personal opinion. Now, this particular interview was no different from any of the others that Martell did because he lied in this interview just like he did in the others. He sat there in that tight ass hoodie where we could see every last one of his heartbeats. Like I said before, his BP was about 5,000 over 200,000 because he was nervous about getting caught up in his lies like he always does. And that's why he no longer interviews because before he was begging people to interview him. But he knows that ain't nobody about to just let him sit up there and lie. Nobody but Carlos or somebody Carlos done arranged, you know, to interview him. OK, he was in his interview, you know, still lying about him and Mel being in a good place, talking about he don't want to bash her when that's exactly why he reached out to Queen Sheba. So he could get on her platform and lie and bash Mel. One of the lies he told was how uh, things went his way in court. This nigga asked for all of Mel's business, okay? Full custody of the kids, child support for his legal fees to be paid. The nigga didn't get none of that. He lost the case, but wanted to continue to lie as if he didn't lose the case. Y'all, Martel said that because he didn't um, go to counseling, if he got custody of the kids, the judge said that he couldn't get child support and couldn't get his legal fees paid. That's probably one of the reasons why he no longer wanted to go to court because he wouldn't have been able to get child support, which was the motivation behind the fucking custody suit. I know he couldn't afford his lawyer, but he could have got that money from Carlos, Belinda, anybody. OK, Queen Sheba told him to tell the people who he was as a man. I could have answered that for him. He's a piece of shit. The kind that keeps floating around in the toilet, no matter how many times you flush it. This nigga said that he's a God fearing man and he loves the Lord, yet he refused. OK, he refused to honor his vows, cheated on his wife, made babies outside of the marriage. OK, he lies as much as he breathes. He steals, then broke all the commandments. You know what I mean? Then he tried to keep up the narrative about him being a good father. When he's a trash ass father, he uses his kids. He manipulates his kids. Okay. Had his kids saying crazy shit about their mother. Tried to take them away from their mother. Okay. He keep talking about he has always been a protector and a provider. But he ain't protect nobody. In fact, he wanted protection from male. With his bitch ass. And when it came to providing, Mel was the money maker. So what exactly did he provide other than stress? Queen Sheba asked him what his favorite meal was. He should have said ass, since that's what he risked his family for. But he said sloppy Joe, okay? Sloppy Joe, ass, same thing. Then he gonna sit up there and lie about having a chef. He want to be male so bad, y'all. Talking about some Chef Danielle, more like Chef Marlene. He said that he had a brother and a sister. His brother is out there living a the fast life, as we already knew, because he too have a mug shot, I believe. He said that, you know, he's trying to get his brother to be an entrepreneur. I was like, maybe when you learn how to be one, you can teach him. Because right now, you can't teach him shit. Your ass on a TV show and still out here living a fast life, had your wife in court trying to take the kids so you could get some fast motherfucking money, but it didn't work out just like everything else in your life. Then he tried to say that he was all, uh, what did he say? Was he positive or something like that? No, he said that he wasn't all negative. He said that he wasn't a negative person when everything about him is negative. Probably everything except his STD test, in my opinion. Martel said that he's been uh, drug across social media for three to four years. Okay. But haven't cheated in three to four years. So he said, why is people still talking about it? First of all, he sounded dumb as fuck because he can't cheat if he ain't got nobody to cheat on. 
Mel left his ass. Had she not left his ass, he would still be there cheating. Because that was initially his plan to continue to cheat on Mel because he figured she would stay and deal with it. And people keep talking about, you know, the cheating because, you know, people keep talking about that because he can't seem to get over her ass leaving his ass because he was a cheater. Like, dumb fuck, what part of that don't you get? It's been like three years and he's still out here throwing tantrums and harassing his ex-wife because he refuses to accept that she don't want him no more and he refuses to move the fuck on. He is actively making her life miserable because she chose not to stay with his lying, disrespectful, disgusting, unfaithful ass. He was saying how people look at him like he's the scum of the earth. But people now see him different. He said, if you meet him, you'll love him. Same shit he said in the other interview. His friends don't see him as a scum of the earth because they just like him. Liars, cheaters, frauds, con artists, and criminals, in my opinion. Of course, if people meet him, they're not going to see that side of him because he pretends to be someone that he's not, like a good person, a good father, an honest man. He's everything but those things. He keeps saying that he's a gentleman and has instilled that in his son when the only thing that he's instilled in his son, as in Tank, is how to copy his mama's credit card number. In my opinion. And how can he say that he's a gentleman when we have seen him get in the faces of several women as if he was ready to attack them? Then, y'all, he said that he instills that in his two-year-old Knox as well. When we've all seen that little boy snatch candy or something out of Sugar Mama's hand and damn near knocked his mama's head off. So he was just sitting there talking about his ass pretty much. Then he tried to say what the rest of the fucked up people say, okay? Oh, that must be editing. I'm not as bad as they try to paint me out to be for their narrative on the show. Boy, bye. Was that you or wasn't that you yelling in Miss Van's face, screaming in Mel's face, calling your wife a hoe? And I could go on and on and on, but I don't have to. Everybody know, okay, that Martell is lying, but Martell. This nigga then said he'll be honest and say that sometimes he do get angry, but because he's a masculine man. First of all, you're not masculine. You're a feminine man. That's why you kept males furs and shit because your ass wanted to wear them. Probably kept the panties too, little lady. And being masculine ain't about getting angry. That just goes to show you that you know absolutely nothing about being a man. Y'all, Queen Sheba asked him if he would marry himself. And he said, absolutely, because he's everything that a man should be. Child, I turned the interview off so fast and went to see what was on Telemundo. Because I would rather watch people speak in a language that I couldn't understand than him to speak in one that I could understand, but was lying the whole fucking way through. Talking about we all make mistakes and have mishaps, but not like the ones your sorry ass done had. We wasn't sitting in the car with walkie-talkies trying to help steal a whole fucking ATM. We not plotting to take away somebody's kids for a check. We ain't cheat on our spouse for several years of the marriage. We ain't go on tours calling our spouse a hoe. Boy, bye. Nigga, you a whole different breed. The nigga said that he was a good friend. And that's because he helps his friends scheme. They're a ring of fucking frauds, in my opinion with him being the ringleader. He said he missed being married, okay? And divorce wasn't in his mind. Divorce wasn't in or on his mind because he was expecting Mel to stay and put up with what the fuck he was dishing out, okay? He was expecting her to continue to put up with him slanging his dick across the nation. And the only thing he missed about his marriage is the money and other benefits that came with it. So y'all, Queen Sheba asked him how important sex was in a marriage. He said, it's important for you to always take care of your mate no matter what. And it's like, first of all, bitch, ain't nobody finna be taking care of you when you got every hoe in the city taking care of you. Okay? You expect somebody to stick your nasty ass 
been around the world ass dick in their mouth, okay? You expect for them to stick that in their mouth. You stick it in your mouth. But anyway, that question, okay, led to the question of, led to the question, um, if sex is so important, pretty much, why ain't you with the bitch you said satisfy you sexually? Then he started fidgeting with that tight ass hoodie. Like no bitch answer the question. If Ariane satisfied you, you know what I'm saying? Why aren't you with her? Why are you instead harassing a woman that you said didn't satisfy you? So he wanted to change it to, well, sex isn't everything. Boy, bye. He said, I'm not going to look at Ariane like it was your sex either. I was like, boy, that's exactly what the fuck Ariane was used for. Even to this day. Y'all know he got to say the right things to keep Ariane from filing them child support papers on his ass or to keep her from telling his deep, dark secrets. He called that girl 15%. 15% to me is a dick suck. That's all she was for him. You know what I'm saying? And he liked the he liked the fact that she respected him even though he wasn't shit. Wasn't shit to respect. Okay? He lost male's respect. He's quick to say that male disrespected him but won't get into why she disrespected him, which is because he wouldn't stop disrespecting her. It disgusted me when he kept saying that he was a protector. When he done went on a tour and called Mel a hoe, disclosed her personal health records, allowed his whore to disrespect her, okay? Was fucking hoes raw and then bringing his dirty dick ass back to her. So what exactly did he protect? Just a full-blown fucking lying ass clown. Martel said that we were driven for negativity and drama. If that's true, then why is there a blackout in effect? Nigga, because nobody wants the negativity, dumb ass. Nobody wants to see a group of tired ass, dusty ass niggas mistreating women. Especially the ones that they are supposed to be married to and have children with. That's exactly why, okay, the show is on its way to have about two fucking viewers. Then his ass really going to be up shit's creek without a paddle because that's his only source of income. That's your only source of income, ma'am. Queen Sheba asked Martel if Tiffany uh, ran Sheree off or did they just break up before that? Martel claims that him and Sheree are in the same place that they were in before. They good. Okay, meaning they uh, <clears throat> still would be participating in their fake ass storyline. Okay, <clears throat> excuse me. This nigga talking about we chilling. We go for walks. We go bike riding. All of the free stuff, y'all. Then he said he'd take her out to dinner. Queen Sheba should have said, do you take her to dinner or does she take your broke ass? His ass would have logged off after that, but that would have been okay. He wasn't doing shit but lying up there anyway. Queen Sheba told him to put his ego aside and answer whether or not he was still in love with Mel. He said no. He said that he was in love with what they had and the things that they accomplished. I say he was in love with what male had and what male accomplished. You know what I'm saying? Like the motherfucking money. She made the money. And he wanted to stand in front of it and say, I did this. Bitch, you didn't do shit, Mr. Breadwinner, but can't win no bread. Can't even get your fucking builder's license, which is crucial to being a builder. Mr. Bob, the no builder's license, having ass nigga. And he went back to pushing that false narrative that he was responsible for her success. Talking about, I pushed her to be great. If he pushed her to be great, then why can't he push himself to be great? How come he couldn't push his baby mama to be great? He talked a whole lot of shit and came back none of it up. Then he tried to continue to push the narrative that it was male too, not just him that ruined the marriage. Talking about, it hurt him that they veered off. He said, we veered off, emphasis on we. He going to say that he don't want no negativity, but proceeded to blame Mel for him cheating and trying. um, It it was just crazy. And he pretty much accused her of profiting off of hurting him. So he continues to not take any accountability at all for the shit that he's done. 
So Queen Sheba was like, well, if you're not in love with Mel, then why the 10 dozen roses? He's going to try to say, well, we had been in court for over a year. And I'm not going to say that it was hard for her because she had me in court too. And his goofy bitch ass was laughing about that shit. He know he was just being spiteful. And that ex- you know, that's exactly why he lost his case. He's a fucking loser. That's going to keep losing because that's all he know how to do. Lose and lie. So this stupid dumb bitch just be talking because at first he said it wasn't tough for her. But then he going to say it was tough for her. Okay. Them being in court and tried to say that's why he sent the roses. Like, bitch, you a complete clown. This nigga said he sent the roses to say he was sorry for what he was taking her through. And let's get on one accord. As in just do what I say do, pretty much. So he gave her the roses. He said to apologize for what he was taking her through. But at no point did he stop taking her through it. You know what I'm saying? What he did was lost the fucking case. And since he can't handle losses, he said that he didn't want a judge telling him what to do. Like he, you know what I'm saying? Like he dropped the case. He is such a disgusting individual. So disgusting with his lying, ugly ass. This nigga going to say that Mel was ecstatic to receive the flowers from him. But was telling somebody else she kept them in a garage. You know what I'm saying? He trying to say that she's saying one thing, but it's really not that way. The lies that he tell, like, boy. Then he got to lying about the paperwork, talking about there are things that Mel didn't want to be seen. But he ain't trying to prove her wrong because him building a relationship with her is more important than proving her wrong. Like, nigga, there is no relationship and there will be no building. You don't even have her phone number. Move the fuck on. You know what I'm saying? When it's your time to get the kids, get the kids. Then drop them off and go go on with your sorry ass life. This nigga going to say the reason why Mel didn't want to talk about what was going on in court was because um, <clears throat> nothing was going her way. It wasn't because she wanted to protect the kids. He said she didn't want to talk about it because it wasn't going her way. And it's like, dude, give it the fuck up. You lost. You lost the case and you lost your wife. You lost your financial stability. You done lost your fucking mind. Okay. They say you're losing your house. Take your L's and just move the fuck on. He claims that the courts, okay, show that he did not abuse his son. If he didn't abuse his son, as in Tank, then he would not have had the kids taken away for 56 days. The judge wouldn't have took the kids away for 56 days, okay? And he would not have been ordered to not inflict corporal punishment upon his kids, okay? Would not have been ordered to go to counseling with the child that it was said that he abused, okay? So it's like, stop fucking lying already. Nobody believes you. You're a fucking liar. You know? Queen Sheba was like, do you really want to talk about this? Because I read what the child said. Like, fuck what you saying. I read what the child was saying. And guess what? Tank wasn't lying. Whatever Tank said Martell did, he did it as far as I'm concerned. So this bitch ass nigga gonna say, if I had my children here with me, I could manipulate them easily. I was like, we know you've done it on multiple occasions. So what he was trying to say was that Mel manipulated Tank into saying that he abused him. Martell going to lie until he take his last breath. He ain't going to never own up to shit. He's incapable. We know kids can be manipulated. We watch your sorry ass do it when you manipulated them into saying shit on camera about Mel. Like she didn't bathe sugar mama. You stupid bitch. But when it comes to your stupid ass using Tank's head as a tambourine, we going to believe that shit. Queen Sheba shared that, you know, in the court documents, she saw it showed that he was given a trespassing warning and he was also uh, sanctioned. He got mad when she brought that shit up because it didn't support the narrative that everything was going his way. Lying ass bitch. And he told himself, he told on himself about punching Tank in the arm. He going to say that Mel was uh, forced to drop it 
because they didn't see where he had abused the kids. I'm hoping that Queen Sheba gets Mel to come back on and address everything that Martell said. I mean, I know he lied, but just want her to confirm it and confirm it with receipts to shut his ass all the way down. So y'all, Queen Sheba call him in another lie. Remember y'all, he came into the interview acting like him and Mel were in a good place. But as soon as the interview started, he was saying negative shit about Mel. He was now saying that, you know, right now Mel is going around bashing him, which is why he wanted to come and do this interview to defend himself with lies. Okay. So if y'all, if you came into the interview saying that you and Mel was in a good place, how is it now that she's going around bashing you? Which one is it? So he going to say, we in a good place outside of doing lives and interviews. He said, just like she was doing an interview several days ago. And the next day she was sitting next to him at one of the kids games. Then he cleaned it up and said, well, she was sitting one bleacher down. I was like, dumbass, she going to come and support her kids. Like, what the fuck are you talking about? Her coming to sit on the bleachers to see her child play while your ass was also in attendance because you're the father don't mean that y'all are in a good place. That means that she's going to be there to support her kids no matter if you're there or not. Y'all, Queen Sheba asked him, why did he think it was fair to ask for child support in the custody case? This lying ass bitch going to say that he didn't ask for child support and was acting like he didn't know where that came from. But earlier in the conversation, he said that because he didn't go to counseling when he was first told to, the judge told him that if he ever was to get custody of the kids, he would not be able to receive child support. And he said, you know, uh, he was like, well, why not? This lying ass bitch know damn well that he requested child support. He know damn well that he had his attorney request all of Mel's financial records and Mel's cousin confirmed that shit. That dude is a pathological, habitual, disgusting ass liar sitting there looking like a fucking Valentine's Day milk dud. Queen Sheba said it's public record. This stupid nigga was like, oh, so you pulled it up? Oh, okay. Well, guess what? I'm still going to lie about it. No, I didn't request child support. I asked her to pay my attorney fees. No, bitch. You asked her for child support as well. And your ass didn't get it. But still out here lying, talking about shit went your way. So she was like, so you didn't ask for child support. Martel said, I can't get child support. Nigga, that don't mean that you didn't request it. You know damn well you requested it. And it was denied. You trifling ass, broke ass fucking bum. To even ask for attorney fees was a bitch ass move when your stupid ass was the one who brought her up in court. So y'all, this goofy ass nigga gonna laugh. And that's how you know he was about to lie. He was laughing and buying himself time to come up with an answer when he saw that Queen Sheba wasn't letting up because she knew that his ass had requested child support. So he was like, oh. Oh, you know, the reason I filed for custody was because, nigga, nobody asked you why you filed for custody because we already know. Your bitch ass was mad because she wouldn't take you back. And plus, your broke ass needed a check. Because the one on was giving you wasn't long enough. It wasn't long enough to support you, your baby mama, your other hoes, and a slew of kids, bitch. She asked you, why did you think? It was fair to request child support. So he went off into talking about, he talked to Mel before he filed for custody, telling her to call him when she had to go out of town or whatever. We done been through this already. He basically wanted to know Mel's every move and she refused to give him that. And he went and filed for custody because he wanted to regain control over Mel again. That was one of the reasons. And he used the kids to do it, which proves that he don't give a fuck about his kids. This nigga said, don't just leave the kids with somebody and let and, and not let me know. When he done had his kids around all his hoes, including Ariane, Belinda, and Sheree, and no telling who else, and didn't tell Mel shit. Martel told her that Mel was in contempt of court by not giving him, uh, what is it, first right of refusal, whatever. Queen Sheba said, well, did you give Mel first right of refusal when you left the kids with Belinda? 
And she brought up how Belinda posted Boss Baby on her IG. She said, how did that come about? And if the kids had ever spent the night with Belinda, he claims they haven't spent the night with Belinda. But Mel should ask the kids that. He said that Belinda was a friend and had dated one of his friends in Huntsville. He said he went over there for an event and the kids stayed for a few hours and said that he was just 20 minutes away from them, which doesn't matter because anything could happen in 20 minutes. You know what I'm saying? While you got your kids around people, the mama don't even fucking know. Queen Sheba asked him what kind of friend would sign a property deal for him. Meaning y'all more than friends, nigga. What kind of relationship did he and Belinda have for her to trust him like that? He gonna say that he's a very trustworthy person. When in fact, he is the last one that anybody should trust. He claims that he been knowing Belinda for a while and that they were business partners. And Queen Sheba was like, you introduced her to everybody when y'all was cooking though. He introduced her like that was their first time meeting. You could tell that he was getting caught up in his lies. He claimed that he was going to build and Belinda was going to be the investor. But ain't no investor getting on social media, posting your kids, talking about being a fucking bonus mom, unless she was investing in your sorry ass, not real estate. He claims that he bought her out of the lot and he's building that house right now. I wouldn't recommend anybody living in it, though. Because if his slow ass can't pass an open book builder's test, he ain't about to build me shit. Not even a fucking snowman. He also said that he's helping Belinda pitch a show. He claims that he didn't help this person and that person, but it baffles me that he can't help himself. If Belinda has ties to Bravo, then what the fuck she need him to help her pitch anything? Why would she need him to help her pitch something? You know what I'm saying? The thing, in my opinion, is that whenever Martell say something, it's the opposite of that. So with that being said, he's not helping Belinda. Belinda is helping him. And him and Belinda are more than friends, in my opinion. He talking about his money back good and he bought Belinda out, you know, of the lot. His money ain't nowhere near good if he claimed that he didn't have money for attorneys and was trying to get money from his wife. You know what I'm saying? And both his house and his mama's house was allegedly in foreclosure. Just sitting up there lying in that tight ass hoodie. Queen Sheba then asked him if he had lost trust in Ariane after she had shared what went on, you know, in his marriage. As far as her telling Carson about the sex tape. She asked him how did he feel about that. Then he gonna try to act like he didn't know what Queen Sheba was talking about. But then he was like, oh, I thought you was talking about something different. Nigga cut the shit because you knew what she was talking about. So in an attempt to discredit Carson, Martell going to say, well, some people are opportunists and they'll say and do whatever they can to get in and, you know, make themselves seem like a really good friend. And people open up trusting those people thinking that they are who they say they are. So while he was insinuating that Carson was an opportunist who got close to Ariane pretending to be a friend, okay? And was just looking for an opportunity. He didn't do nothing but describe himself. A fucking opportunist who pretends to be something he's not to gain the trust of others to get what he wants. Fucking loser. Then he gonna say that Carson lied about things. Carson wasn't lying about that. Nigga, I done already dropped the receipts. This is some shit your ass done told Ariane a while ago. And her big mouth ass took it to social media. Okay? made a whole new twitter page just so she could repeat some shit about mel your stupid ass lied and told her okay talking about mel was in hotel room sucking dicks that wasn't her husband so he wasn't answering the question y'all that queen sheba asked so she asked him again she said how do you feel about ariane sharing your marital business with a stranger the tape what i wanted to say was that's exactly what he was doing that's exactly what he was doing, sharing his marital business with Ariane. Mel's business, he shared with Ariane, a random ass bitch he was fucking, and shared with her a tape that was just for him and his wife. 
But anyway, y'all, this bald head, dumbass, ignorant ass clown told on himself. He admitted that Ariane did share, you know, the tape with Carson. Right after he tried to say that Carson lied. So Martel's response to Queen Sheba's question about how he felt about Ariane sharing that tape information. That's what she did. She shared the tape information with Carson. That's what I meant. Okay. Um, so Martel's response to Queen Sheba's question about how he felt about Ariane sharing that tape information with Carson, telling Carson that Martel wanted her to release the sex tape behind a fake page, pretending to be a man, another man. He said that it was disappointing. <laughs> he said it was disappointing. I know he didn't look back on this interview and feel dumb as fuck. He damn sure looked it. He said that everybody make mistakes and that he was just going to leave it right there. Queen Sheba asked him if he had a conversation with Ariane about the way it backfired on him. She said, did you sit down and say, listen, when I talk to you or share something with you, that's not for you to go to with, you know, that's not for you to share with anybody else. So Martel sat there and said that it happened a year and a half ago. He said, <clears throat> excuse me. He said he talked to both Mel and Carlos about it a year and a half ago. And they talked to their attorneys. First of all, he lying. Mel talked to her attorneys after his bitch ass threatened her. And that was last year. What the fuck he going to talk to his attorneys for? Mel didn't threaten him. He threatened her and he didn't talk to Carlos about shit until probably recently, which probably played a part in him doing this interview to try to clear his name when he ended up admitting to everything he has been accused of doing with his dumb ass. So y'all, he just started talking about his ass saying that um, he saw Carson's live and how Carson referenced mail like three times. And he was saying how Carson, um, uh, how can Carson be so sure that Mel had that information unless, you know, she was already talking to Mel? I was like, what the fuck does that have to do with anything? Nothing. He then said that the only thing Ariane could have said to Carson was that Martel was mad and he was thinking about putting out a sex tape of Mel. So very quickly to the bitch who came through here trying to tell me what to do and say on my motherfucking channel. The lady got a little bothered, okay, the last time I was talking about this sex tape situation, and I was calling the tape a sex tape. She said, it's a recording. Can you please stop saying sex tape? It was a recording of intimate moments or whatever the fuck her annoying ass said. I was like, bitch, it's a fucking sex tape, and that's why I blocked her ass because I don't like stupid people. I'm going to call it what the fuck it was. It was a fucking tape that consisted of Mel and her husband having sex. You don't like it too fucking bad. I'm not the one who made it or recorded it. If you don't like how I call a thing a thing, stay the fuck up off my channel. Now, let me continue. So Martel said that he know that Ariane didn't go to Carson and say Martel wanted her to create a fake page. Because why would he need her to um, post from a fake page when he could have did it? Y'all, he been watching my videos because that's exactly what I said. I said Martel could have posted from a fake page himself, but he wanted Ariane to do the shit. He wanted Ariane to do it so it wouldn't come back on him. If fingers got to point at him, he was going to point his fingers at Ariane so his hands would be clean. Because he don't give a fuck about Ariane and feel that she is beneath him. And I'm sure he would feel like it would be much better if she took the fall for it than him. We already saw that she was dumb enough to get online and threaten to release names of the guys Mel allegedly sucked off, okay? Just, just some shit Martel told her. And she couldn't wait to repeat it because she don't like Mel, because she believed that Mel was the reason Martel was not with her. So again, Queen Sheba said, how do you feel about Ariane talking too much and oversharing? He said that he wasn't worried about that and that some people make mistakes. I was like, they sure do. Mel made a big mistake. Because you are the worst mistake a bitch could ever make. But he said that Ariane talking too much is taken care of and it's besides the point. Then he went into saying how Mel could have called him. And that's the thing. He always want Mel to call him. In every interview, you know, that he's had recently, he is saying that Mel could have called him. 
Because that's all he want is for Mel to pick up the phone and call him and talk to him. He want access to her and he don't have that. And because he don't have that, he want to make her life miserable. Like you stupid, dumb bitch, call you for what? You the one who threatened her with a sex tape that she made in the privacy of her home with her husband at the time, which would be you, bum ass. Then you shared that shit with Arian and no telling who else. And then she shared that shit with other people. What the fuck do Mel need to call your stupid ass for? She called who she should have called, which was her motherfucking attorney. Now release the tape if you bad, bitch. Let's see how fast your ass end up in a fucking cell. You and the dumb bitch that you recruited to do your dirty work. You dirty asshole. Queen Sheba was like, "Uh uh-uh, that's not Mel's responsibility. Nigga, you did this. You caused this. It's not Mel's responsibility to call you about some shit one of your bitches doing. So Martel, you know, looking just so fucking stupid, he gonna say, you're not understanding what I'm saying. Queen Sheba was like, oh, I'm following you. And she was, and so was I. But he still felt the need to reiterate reiterate that Mel should have called him. He said when Carson went live... And that's if it wasn't orchestrated by Mel and Carson, okay? Because Carson mentions Mel's name two or three times in a live. That's what he said. He sounded so fucking stupid. That was him once again attempting to blame Mel for some shit that he caused. He was trying to say that Carson and Mel conspired this shit and that Ariane didn't really tell Carson that he tried to get her to release a sex tape from a fake page. That's the shit. He was trying to put out there, but people with sense ain't going to buy that shit. This nigga said that once Carson went live, Mel should have called him and should have been like Martel. What did you share with Ariane? Opposed to going on live, dragging him, making it seem, you know, that he actually put the video out. First of all, you stupid ass bitch. The only reason you probably didn't put the tape out was because Mel contacted her attorneys and your ass couldn't afford to catch a case, especially when you was fighting to take her kids away from her, you stupid ass bitch. And Mel did not drag you. She got online and verified that there was a sex tape and that your ass had already threatened to release the sex tape. So if you want to say that her telling the truth was dragging you, so be it. You dumb bitch, she asked you what your end game was. And when would your healing start? Because you are one sorry ass, but hurt, wicked, evil, stupid ass bastard. To be willing to have a sex tape that your then wife made with you released onto social media where it would forever remain for her family and her children and her friends to see, all because your sick ass couldn't handle the fact that she left your tired, trifling motherfucking ass. So you could be with the bitch that you kept leaving to go be with while you was married to her. She said that you went on a whole crusade trying to paint her out to be a hoe. Nigga, where was the lie? Where was the lie? That's exactly what the fuck you did and continue to do. But she wrong for telling the truth, but you ain't wrong for doing the shit that she said you did. Make it make sense. Bitch, get a new therapist because the one you got ain't working. Probably because you're more interested in taking selfies with a bitch than you are working on yourself, dumbass. I wouldn't be surprised if you fucking her. Because that's all your life consists of. is fucking losing and looking stupid. Y'all, this clown said that Mel doesn't know if there's a video that exists. She don't know if there's a video that exists. I was like, you stupid ass bitch. You lying ass bitch. What the fuck you mean? She don't know a tape exists. When she made the tape with you and you sent her a clip up. The very same fucking tape, dumbass. Like I was just sitting there looking at him in that menstrual red tight ass hoodie and was like, nigga, just pull those two drawstrings down. Cover your face and log the fuck off. Because you, ma'am, are one stupid ass idiot. Like why are you even showing your face right now? You look a mess. You sound a mess. You are a mess. Queen Sheba was like pretty much What you mean she don't know a tape exists? Nigga, she did it. Y'all listen to this. This stupid motherfucker gonna say, he gonna then say, I sent her a screenshot of her and I. So y'all, not only did he just, oh my goodness. Mm -mm -mm. 
he gonna say that Mel don't know if a sex tape exists. But then his very next words was, I sent her a screenshot of her and I. Just fucking crazy. The dummy admitted to sending Mel a screenshot. Like she said he did. He threatened her with revenge porn. And when she wouldn't be quiet, uh, unbelievable. Unbelievable. He threatened her with revenge porn. Okay? Because she wouldn't be quiet and allow him to lie on her online in peace. So there you have it. He done told on himself. And watch what Carlos do. Watch what Own do. Absolutely nothing. Which is why the ratings for the show will continue to seep into the trash until there's only two fucking viewers left. And that's going to be the people behind the show trying to figure out where they went wrong. Y'all went wrong by allowing criminalistic abuse of toxic niggas onto a show that was supposed to display black excellence, but has displayed everything but. Y'all, Martel said that he sent Queen Sheba a text message with documents because he wanted her to be able to refer to them throughout the interview. Y'all, this nigga said that he sent her something that he sent to Mel. Y'all, he sent Mel a message saying to her, stop bullying me. This is what he told Mel, y'all. Stop bullying me. (laughs) If you know, you know. Narcissists love projecting. He sent Mel a message saying stop bullying him. But his bitch ass was the one sending her a screenshot of that sex tape threatening her. Then he had her in court trying to take her kids away to force her into taking his trash ass back but she is the one bullying him can y'all believe that shit that lady has been trying to move on with her life but he is the one who keep trying to be a part of hers he keep trying to get her to take him back and when she don't he unleash an attack on her but she is the one bullying him. It's like, did he get that psychiatric evaluation yet? Like what? He said that he was begging her to stop going online dragging him. But his definition of dragging him is her telling the truth about things he actually did with receipts to back the shit up as opposed to him who was just getting online lying on her. And the only time she got on and spoke her truth was after he had went on and started lying. Sometimes she didn't say shit, but when she did, it was a problem because he wanted to be able to lie in peace. And when he couldn't, he threatened to release that sex tape. But again, she is the one bullying him. (sighs) This nigga said, she kept bullying me and dragging me. So I sent her the screenshot saying, I don't care if this ruined me or not. Leave me alone. First of all, bitch, you did care, which is why you were only willing to put out the part of the video where Mel was sucking your dick. So you could make it seem like she was sucking somebody else's dick, which is why you wanted Ariane's ass to release it from a fake page so it wouldn't fall on your stupid ass. Bitch, the only person you were willing to ruin was Mel. And that was because she didn't want your sorry, low value ass back in her life. So y'all, Queen Sheba asked a good question. So since Martel said that Mel didn't know that there was a video and Mel was saying that there was, she asked him if he recorded Mel without her knowledge. But I feel like that should be a question asked to Mel because Martel ain't going to tell the truth. He don't know what it is to tell the truth. But anyway, Martel said that if he had anything his wife would know. My thing is, did she know because she found out about it after you secretly recorded her or did she know because she was aware? So yeah, that would be a question for Mel because she would know if she willingly did it or if he secretly recorded her. Cause I feel like it could be 50, 50. Some people do sex tapes, I guess, because it may be something that their spouse want to do and they trust their spouse. You know, they might want to spice things up. On the other hand, some niggas are trifling and want something to hold over your head, like Martel. So whoever get Mel in an interview next, I'm hoping that this is one of their questions for her. Okay? So Queen Sheba then asked him 
why he would think that Carson and Arion would make that up about the tape. He said, or Carson would make that up. Carson didn't make shit up, at least not about that tape. You did what she said Ariane told her you did. But the thing is, and Queen Sheba said this, how would Carson know? How would she know, though, about the tape? If Ariane didn't say shit to her about it. And it wasn't no way around that. So he said Ariane could have just mentioned it. But Ariane couldn't have mentioned shit she didn't know about. And she knew about it because of your ass, nigga. Everything falls on his stupid ass. That sex tape fiasco that involved Miss Van, whole time, they was probably talking about the tape Martell had of mail. Because they all probably saw it. Including the Scott brother. Because Van said she would never make a sex tape. I believe I heard her say that in a recent interview when asked about the tape situation. Now, I don't know if Miss Van was intimate with, you know, Mark, you know, but if so, I wouldn't put it past him to have secretly recorded her. Martel was talking about in a previous interview how they put Huntsville on the map. I say they need to take it off the map and pretend like that motherfucker don't exist because who the fuck want to go there and deal with who and what's there? So then Martel bitch ass said that Carson was trying to get on the show and she not going to get on the show. And she addressed that in a live that she did um, the other night, but we'll speak on that later. But Martel telling Carson that she wasn't going to get on was him saying, okay, since she wanted to snitch, because he know Carson ain't lying on him about what he was trying to get Ariana to do. He just mad at her for telling the truth because her telling the truth exposed him even further for being the piece of shit that he is. He knows that he can get whoever he want on that show and can block whoever he want from getting on the show because of his fuckship. Oops, I mean friendship that he has with Carlos. Everybody that done got on that show done came on through Martel, in my opinion, even Stormy. Mel may have spoken up for Stormy, but Stormy probably went through Martel first. Her husband and Martel are friends. Okay? <clears throat> Martel has a clo is close to Carlos. I have absolutely no respect for Carlos' ass. And I was trying to make my own judgment instead of just going off of what other people said about him. But my judgment is in. The only thing he care about is a number one show, which is why the ratings are continuing to drop. Because he ain't right. He can put up as many spiritual quotes and post what he wants. But the fact that he is enabling Martel and his bullshit, it's going to be his downfall. Then Martel still tried to get us to believe that Mill and Carson plotted this. No, bitch. You and a bitch you ruined your marriage for plotted this. And the truth came out about your ass. And you sitting there in that fucking choker ass hoodie trying to blame everybody else as you always do for your fuck ups. It's not going to work. So this stupid bald head bitch that's probably running my pressure up, okay? Going to say to sum it all up, he never said that he was going to put a video out. A video isn't out and nobody never told him not to put it out. First of all, you fucking ashy ass bottom of the barrel, Terry Heights citizenship holding, lunchable, stealing ass, loser ass fucking bastard. Nobody should have to tell you not to put the tape out because that's a that's fucking common sense. You stupid bitch. You know damn well. She wasn't sucking your dick so the whole world could see it. You disgusting ass, tight suit, funky boot wearing asshole. And you didn't say. Okay? This nigga said, I didn't say I was going to put the tape out. You didn't say that you was going to put the tape out to refrain from incriminating yourself. And Mel going to her attorneys is why your sorry ass didn't put the tape out. You are the worst of the worst. And that's exactly why you're going to forever be in a struggle with your bum motherfucking ass, with your stupid fucking ass. You are disgusting. And if you was my ex-husband, I would have all of my game banger cousins wear your motherfucking ass out. They would need dental records to identify your motherfucking ass as you lay there on the sidewalk struggling to remember what year you was in, bitch. You are the fucking worst. And for all of those dumb asses saying that this is just a show. Okay. This is just a show. Can he live? Stop tearing him down. 
This bitch ass nigga is a bitch ass nigga in real life. That's not just on the show. He is a real life fucking atrocity. Y'all, this nigga going to try to say a judge didn't tell him not to put the tape out. But he stopped himself and said that Mel mentioned the tape in court. First of all, you dumbass bitch, it's a federal fucking crime to partake in revenge porn. You stupid ass bitch. What the fuck you mean a judge didn't say don't release the tape? This nigga is fucking insane. He needs help. Just sitting there looking stupid, looking lost, looking defeated. He should have just ended the video. Should have just ended the interview. Because this shit made him look worse than he already looked. And I didn't even think it could get no worse. This nigga said, I didn't put the tape out, so why go online crying? Bitch, why have you been online crying? You the one been online crying about not having access to your ex-wife. Your ex-wife was online crying because she can't believe that she married such a fucking loser and had kids with such a bitch-ass nigga. It's called regrets. She probably regret the day that she ever met your retarded ass. You are a fucking slow ass, criminal ass bum that she pulled up out the mud, cleaned your dirty ass the fuck up and tried to give you a better life. And you repaid her by not repaying her and then went out and shared what she helped you get with other bitches while telling her that she was no longer good enough for you and no longer satisfied you. You. Ugh. She was crying because the nigga she married and gave four children to would be willing to go to those lengths to destroy her after she has spent the past 15 years trying to help your sorry ass. Something your own fucking drunk ass mama could do, bitch. That's why she's crying, ho. Let's talk about why you crying, though. Because a bitch don't want your nothing ass no more. Because your broke ass ain't got no money. Because you stuck with the bitch you ruined your marriage for. But never wanted to be with. With your stupid ass. You crying because you hungry. You crying because you have no one to help your ass read no more. You crying because you can't use Mel's builder's license no more. You crying because you a bitch ass nigga that will never have another male, ho. This nigga going to say, I would not have done it. He's saying that he would not have released the tape. When he would have done it, had Mel not con- had she not contacted her attorney, and had Ariane not been scared to go through with it, he would have done it because he plotted to do it. He feel like because this happened a year ago, Mel shouldn't be bringing it up no more. And that's what narcs do; they like to do shit to hurt you and then tell you not to bring it up no more, even if it happened yesterday, because they don't want to be reminded of the fuck shit that they did because it makes them look bad. And they don't want to take accountability for shit. And plus, you know, all things is about their image. They like to abuse you behind closed doors, which is why he got so mad at Mel when she told everybody about the shit he had been doing in the marriage, both in the marriage and out. Queen Sheba said, it's not about you and Mel. It's about Ariane telling somebody else. But I feel like it's about both because Mel has every right to be upset because Ariane, you know, could not have told anybody else had Martell not told her. But Queen Sheba knew that and she was trying to get Martell to see that. But of course, he was only going to see things the way that he wanted to see him, which is why he was defending Ariane and said that it was about what Carson put out there. But had Martell not shared anything with Ariane, Ariane would not have been able to tell Carson shit. But he refuses to accept accountability. And was focused on blaming Carson and Mel for some shit him and Ariane plotted to do. This nigga gonna say Carson acted like she was a friend and was a fake friend. An opportunist. Something he is, by the way. While he was sitting over there on Real Housewives of Atlanta fighting for a peach. It don't matter what Carson acted like. The fact of the matter is that Carson could not have revealed anything to us that Ariane didn't reveal to her. And Ariane could not have revealed anything to Carson that your bitch has didn't reveal to her. Now let that marinate, you dumbass bastard. Then he went back to saying Carson was an opportunist and wasn't going to be on the show. He was like, she not going to be on the show. She not. I don't care. 
Like, bitch, you snitched on me and now you're not getting on the show. But Carson, she already knew that she threw away her chances of getting on that show by revealing that information about the tape. So I guess if she cared that much about being on the show, she would have kept her mouth shut. I still don't trust Carson 100%, but I know deep down that she ain't lying about that tape situation. Because Ariane had already threatened Mel about releasing names of guys who dicks Martell told her Mel sucked. And Martell had also threatened Mel with the sex tape. So Carson is not lying when it comes to that. Queen Sheba said Carson said Ariane reached out to her. Martell was like, no, 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 no. So he was adamant about defending Ariane and blaming everything on Carson and Mel. So while Martell was saying, you know, that Ariane didn't reach out to Carson, Queen Sheba was like, nigga, how do you know that? Women talk all the time. And we all know that Ariane got a big ass mouth, like literally. So Queen Sheba said, how do you know for sure? Martell said, I don't know for sure, but I can say that Ariane didn't say Martell wanted her to create a fake page and post a video. Yeah, you can say that, but it don't make it true. It don't make it true. You would hope that Ariane didn't say that because that would throw your stupid ass under the bus. When you already look like your ass been hit by one with your tired looking stupid ass. Queen Sheba then asked him if there was a reason why he didn't uh reel that in meaning say to ariane me and mel are done leave that shit off the internet because y'all know how ariane fast to get on the internet to say negative shit about mel especially shit that martel then told her which was all lies and the reason he didn't reel that shit in was because he used ariane as a weapon against mel he put the battery in ariane's back a lot of times and other times she was just mad that martel didn't want her and blasted him but most times in my opinion Martel had Ariane say some of the things that she got online and said about Mel. So Martel was like, when? Like he didn't know about all the times Ariane got her ass online talking shit. Queen Sheba said when Ariane would say things like, I took your nigga with my eyes closed. Ain't never had him, but in her mind, she took Martel with her eyes closed. Yeah, while she was sucking his dick. And then when he nutted, she opened her eyes. And before she could blink, he was back home with his wife. And that's why she was mad. Womp womp. Queen Sheba was like, she didn't even say a shit about you. Martel said, Martel said, there's a lot of things he don't know. So you mean to tell me that he know everything male doing? Like how often she posts, how many babysitters she got and so on, but he don't know what Ariane doing? Boy, bye. So he gonna say, even when male goes live, other people have to send him that stuff. I was like, no, they don't, bitch. You know damn well you have another page that alerts you every time Mel goes live. Okay? It alerts you every time Mel's go, Mel go live, bitch, because you know damn well you follow her, in my opinion, literally. You stalkerish ass bitch. You looking for Mel when you need to be looking for a motherfucking job. So Queen Sheba asked him again, was there a reason why he didn't reel that in and say, I can fight my own battles. Let me and Mel work this out. I don't need you as a mouthpiece. I only need your mouth when you suck in my dick. Other than that, be quiet. He didn't tell Ariane that because Ariane was his weapon when battling Mel. But I just want to say this. Queen Sheba was good at what she was doing. She would ask Martel a question. And she would know that his answer was full of shit. So she would ask him again and get a different answer out of him. That second go round, he would admit to what she was trying to get out of him, you know, trying to get him to admit. Queen Sheba had gotten this nigga to admit to a lot of things in, in this in that interview. That's why I said earlier that I know he looked back at that interview and was like, man, what did I get on there and say? Let me go hit myself across the head with one of these fucking Inez wine bottles. I mean, he might as well, because it's not like the shit selling. So Queen Sheba asked Martel again, was there a reason that he did not tell Ariane to stop what she was doing? So this time, y'all, he said, well, I did. But you just sat up there a minute ago and acted like you didn't know what Ariane was doing. And said that you don't be knowing a lot of the stuff that goes on. This is what law enforcement do when they try to get you to incriminate yourself. Good job, Queen Sheba. 
Martel said he had talked to Ariane, but some people are headstrong and going to do what they want to do. Some people are like that. Then he said to come to Ariane's defense, he said six people talked about her on the TV show for several years. Queen Sheba said who? I'm going to need you to name names because I'm going to go pull tapes. And if I'm wrong, I'm going to apologize. Queen Sheba knows that Martel is a fucking liar. Ain't nobody sat up there and talked about that girl for no fucking six years. Nigga, your ass was fucking her for six years, six plus years, knowing your motherfucking ass was married. And since you are openly on a fucking reality TV show and being a sorry cheating ass nigga was your reality. Melody shared that shit. Because it was also her reality. It was her reality that she was married to a sorry ass, bum ass cheater. This is what y'all signed up for to share y'all fucking reality. So, whatever you didn't want to have talked about, you should not have been doing. And Ariane was one of those things that your whole ass should not have been doing because you had a wife at home, a wife who had had enough of your nasty ass. So, if y'all on a reality TV show and your marriage is crumbling, Of course, she's going to share that. She's going to share why it is crumbling. And Ariane was a part of the fucking why. Nobody, including Mel, was on that show constantly talking about that girl. And even if Mel talked about her every fucking day of every motherfucking season, if Ariane could fuck her husband for several years and have a baby by him, then Mel could talk about her ass fucking her husband for several years and having a baby by him. Fuck that bitch. Oh, y'all keep discussing me. Like, who the fuck do you think you are that you going to do what you did and say the things that you have said, Ariane fucking Curry, and think that the person you did it to have no right to speak on you? Bitch, you lucky she didn't pull up on your ass and end you because you was playing a dangerous game. There are people who are no longer here because they went out there and did the same shit your ass did. Now, getting back to this sorry ass nigga, Martel said that all six cast members, including him, talked about Ariane on the show for three years, at least three years. You can't tell me that Ariane ain't got some shit on his ass, y'all. He might as well just come up out the closet now or he going to be defending her ass forever. Queen Sheba said, well, Martel, you don't think that her being talked about comes with the infidelity, you stupid ass nigga? Martel said, just because you cheat or you're a part of a scandal, that don't mean that a TV show got the right to be discussing you if they not going to let you come on and defend yourself. But it's like, bitch, there's nothing to defend. When she was mentioned on the show, no lies were told. Did she or did she not engage in a multi-year affair with your then married ass? Yes or no? Did she not give birth to your child while you were still married to your then wife? Yes or no? Did she not call your phone and mail picked up? Yes or no? Did she not get online saying that you like to eat her ass? Yes or no? It's a yes all across the board. So what exactly was there for her to defend? Absolutely nothing. Ariane just wanted to come on that show and become famous because that's all she talked about. She was always talking about how the rest of the cast had become famous and was making money because her ass wasn't. And she was blown about that shit because Martel had promised her that he was going to get her on that show. In my opinion, knowing damn well that he never really was going to get her ass on that show because he was embarrassed of her. For one, he called her ass a peasant on national TV. Of course, he didn't want her on the show. But now that his ass ain't got Mel's money no more. You know what I'm saying? And he broke. And he probably figured Ariane being on the show can put money in his pocket, especially if Knox is filmed, since that's his child too. That's probably why all of a sudden he wanted to start calling Knox Maverick so he could blend in with the other kids because he was going to try to bring his little ass on the show to film. Plotting ass, stupid ass bastard. Martel said that he didn't care what Queen Sheba or anybody else had to say. They shouldn't have been talking about Ariane if they weren't going to let her come on the show. 
He is so fucking full of it, y'all. He know Ariane watching that interview and want to make her feel good. And it's like the nerve of him to even say some shit like that. The nerve of him to act like Ariane deserved to be on a show that Mel started. The nerve of Ariane to think that she belonged on a show that Mel started. The bitch whose marriage she helped destroy. Just fucking crazy. Both her and Martell. Just crazy. And him and Ariane both know that Ain't nobody talked about her ass for years. Kimmy didn't. The Scott brothers didn't. Tisha didn't. Mel didn't. So stop fucking lying. And the few times that she was spoken of, they didn't say her name. Also, let me just bring back up that when Mel said, since Ariane do so much for you, why don't you just go ahead and be with her? She said this on one of the episodes and Martel said he didn't want to be with her. So no matter what Ariane heard anybody else say about her, that's what she should have been focused on. Martel saying that he did not want to be with her. Okay. Now, Queen Sheba came all the way through when she asked the next question. So while Martel was saying that basically Ariane should have been allowed to come onto the show, Queen Sheba said, well, why didn't you bring her on the show then, Martel? Then he started stuttering and looking stupid because he had no words. But he found some and he going to say, because it was out of my hands. No, it wasn't, you lying ass bitch. And let me tell you why you a lying ass bitch. Because if you could get Belinda on the show, you could get Ariane on the show. The mother of your illegitimate child on the show. You got Stormy and her husband on the show. Destiny and her husband. That chick Ma'at with the blonde curly hair. Sheree. You've gotten everybody on that show but Ariane. Now that you see that Mel ain't taking your ass back and you desperate for money, you want Ariane to come on with Knox, bastard. Which is why I absolutely believe you trying to get Ariane to pass that builder's test so she can fit in on the show. But she would never fit in because she's a side chick and not a wife. And she's ruining her chances of ever becoming a wife by sticking beside your dusty, terrible ass. Queen Sheba said, why didn't you fight for her to be on the show? Martell said, I'll be real with you. I did. I did fight for her to be on the show. I talked to the producers and I'm not going to say no name. You're not going to say no name because the shit didn't happen. You may have fought Ariane, but you damn sure ain't fight for her. Okay. Because what would Martell Holt look like to the people? Fighting for a bitch he called a peasant. 15%. A bag of fucking oranges, along with other shit, okay? Martell said that everything Ariane did wasn't right, but what they all did on the show, including him, wasn't right because they were bashing her. First of all, he full of shit. Didn't nobody bash her but him. When Mel spoke of Ariane, she spoke facts without mentioning her name. He's saying that, you know, that's why Ariane was always angry and going online because they wouldn't let her on to defend herself. Her and Martell want to defend the truth with lies because everything said about Ariane on that show was the truth. The few times that she was spoken of, there, there was nothing to defend. Nothing. So when he said that that was why Ariane was so upset and getting online saying the shit that she was saying, he was saying that Mel didn't have a right to be upset for you know him cheating on her or having a baby outside of marriage or trying to get his side hole to release her sex tape. But Ariane had the right to get upset because she couldn't come onto the show. Mel's show, the show of the woman whose marriage she helped destroy. Beyond fucking insane. Don't nobody give a fuck about Ariane being angry. She can stay angry. But where has it gotten her? She still ain't on the show and ain't going to be on the fucking show. Actually, this show is about to come to an end, in my opinion. Martell ain't going to even be on the show. If Owen want me to, I'll create them a new show and have them a number one show on the network in no time. Make me the producer or at least the creative director because Carlos got to go. So, y'all, this nigga going to then have the nerve to say that at one point he started to get angry because the show had him looking so negative. Like I said, everything about him is negative, but he mad because the show was showing that. I guess he wanted production to edit that out. So it wouldn't stain that good guy image that he tried to push. So he was blaming production for making him look like the angry black man that he was and still is. He act like that wasn't him getting up in these women faces, looking like he wanted to punch them into another planet. 
But we're going to see if he have the same that same energy with Big Lou in this upcoming episode. Because Big Lou going to check his whole ass for confronting his pregnant wife. But that's what bitch niggas do. They want to jump tough with women, but won't blink twice at a man. Deep down, they don't care for women at all. So he said that he was always, uh, he said that he was always mad because his back was against the wall. And now people saying that he's a different person. I was like, no, nobody's saying that you're a different person because we all know that you're still the same narcissistic, loser ass, angry ass, trash ass bitch boy that you've always been. You want people to think that you're different, but you're not. Queen Sheba asked Martel if Ariane would have come on the show. What do he think she would have cleared the air about? I said shit, because no lies was told on her ass. Therefore, she couldn't have cleared shit. But the fucking show, that, that was just, it just baffles me. It's just the audacity, the the nerve. The nerve of the, ugh, the nerve of that bitch to think that she deserved to come on male show. First of all, everybody probably would have refused to film with her ass. But anyway, Martel said that she would have, uh, she would have to ask um, Ari on that. Queen Sheba said, well, you fought for her, right? So hopefully you had a strong business case. Martel said it's simple. Every time Queen went around a second time, y'all, with the same question, she got the answer she wanted to get out of Martel. If I'm saying that correctly, okay? Martel said it's not about a business case or how well Ariane would have did on the show. He said that if a person is being discussed on a show, they should be there to defend themselves, to go toe-to-toe with each person speaking about them. He's saying this shit to make Ariane happy. The truth of the matter is that he didn't want her on the show until recently. He fed her a lot of hopes and dreams, okay? And didn't come through because he only told her that shit to keep her hanging in there with him so he could use her whenever he wanted to and it worked. Ariane used to have it on her IG bio that she was going to take over the world. She has since removed it after I brought that shit up. I feel like she put that on her IG page because Martel was feeding her bullshit about how he was going to make her a fucking star when his ass ain't even a star. Probably can't even spell it. If Mel left the show today, that would be it for Martel. They damn sure don't want his bitch ass over on the Real Housewives of Atlanta after he threw a bitch fit because he got exposed for being the pathetic ass opportunist that he is. So Martel was like, it's not like I'm all rah-rah for Ariane. It's just that you acting like you don't know why she should be on the show. And what else did he say? And he said, and she should be on the show because we talked about her. And it's like, bitch, you talked about her because she was a hoe that your stupid ass ruined your marriage for. And you are definitely rah-rah for that hoe. Never protected your wife. But up here, rah-rah for a bitch that you call 15%. While you bash, what was your 80%? Actually, Mel was your 100% because she carried your dead weight ass all throughout the motherfucking marriage. And because she didn't want to suck your dick a night or two because she was either tired from working or scared her mouth was going to look like a nasty fucking crunch after she was done, you went and forfeited your whole fucking life with your bald head, stupid ass. You fucking ring around the rosy, pocket full of hosies, plan ass bitch. So Queen Sheba said that don't nobody need to defend themselves when a 14 year marriage has been dissolved. The third person that willingly came into the picture has absolutely nothing to defend. That bitch knew he was married. And has yet to take any accountability, which is why she is going through it right now. And she going to continue to go through it until she make the changes that she need to make. Queen Sheba said, Martel, you said that everybody has a choice and Ariane made a choice. So what exactly does she need to defend? She don't need to defend shit. She just want to be famous off the back of a woman whose marriage she helped to destroy, which lets me know that she has to be mental just like the nigga she throwing her life away for, okay? Martel decided to answer that question by saying, when it comes to his marriage, him and Mel, knowing what they know now, they would have made different decisions. 
Now that may be true because if Mel had to do it over again, knowing what she know now, I'm almost certain she would have never married that fucking loser. This fucking narcissistic, lying ass, cheating ass, abusive ass, terrible ass bastard. Y'all, he kept pushing the narrative that Ariane should be on the show. And just him feeling that way should be enough for Mel to decide to walk away and be like, here, bitch, bring on whoever you want because I'm gone. And I guarantee you that show won't make it to the next episode because won't nobody be watching. He is a poor excuse for a man, a sorry ass fucking husband, and just terrible. He had the nerve to say that Mel was making him look like the devil when that's exactly what the fuck he is. She don't have to make him look like shit. Not only... Does he do the evil shit, but it makes him feel good to do the evil shit. In fact, that's exactly what the fuck he looked like sitting up there in that red ass, tight ass, titty crushing ass hoodie. All he needed was the horns. So y'all, Queen Sheba asked Martell about the sighting of him and Ariane in Tennessee a few months ago. She said that him and Ariane were spotted on an elevator, but of course Martell didn't want to admit to that. So he took a sip of that piss he called wine and said that he couldn't recall being in Tennessee with Ariane. At first he said, you have any pictures? And Queen Sheba said yes. He didn't say nothing, just sipped on that hot piss that he was drinking. So next, y'all, this clown admitted to having the kids around Ariane, something that he knows is going to fuck with Mel. He also defends Ariane like he do because he knows that's going to fuck with Mel as well. Yes, I believe that she got a shitload of shit on Martel's ass. I believe Ariane got a shitload of shit on Martel's ass, but I also feel like he do, he do that shit to fuck with Mel. He going to forever do shit like this until Mel take him back. And since that's not going to happen, he's going to try to make her life miserable until Sugar Mom is 18 years old. He's mad that... He, not mad he's made that very clear that they have a long road ahead of, ahead of them him and Mel. but if he know what i know he'll go and sit his ass down somewhere before god sent him down okay so she asked him if the kids liked her uh, queen sheba asked martel if the kids liked ariane if, and if Ariane liked the kids, we already know that Ariane don't like the kids and she's very jealous of the kids, which is why Martel, which is why Mel should have asked the judge to order Martel not to have the kids around her. Your kids shouldn't be around anybody that don't care for you. Ariane don't even have a legit reason to hate Mel, but she does, which proves that she is unstable and should not be around those kids. She don't like the kids and I would be willing to bet that the kids don't like her ass. I mean, didn't Mariah tell her to get her ass away from her daddy that day that Mel was driving down the street and the kids saw Martell and Ariane at a restaurant or someplace? I don't give a fuck if she's Knox's mother. She can be Knox's mother, you know what I'm saying? Far away from my fucking kids, if that was me. He tried to pretend like he wanted to move away from that question, but he know that he was in a mood to fuck with Mel, so he admitted to having the kids around Ariane. He said that they all get along, um... But we all know how he lied, just like he was sitting up there lying about him and Mel getting along. Oh, goofy ass bastard. This nigga going to say that Ariane is a good mother. But he trashes Mel as a mother every chance he gets when his broke ass ain't even providing for his kids. Mel is doing everything, but he want to bash her as a mother. He want to bash her as a person, period, because she no longer wants his ass. Because if she was that bad, he wouldn't be trying to get back with her. Who persistently tries to get back with a trash ass mother and a trash ass person? Queen Sheba then asks him, how does he determine who meets the kids? I guess whoever gives his broke ass gas money to go pick them up for mail. Cause them kids done probably been around all his hoes, even the ones we don't know about. He a dumb ass bastard. So he responded by saying that the next woman to meet his kids hopefully will be his future wife. He went into saying how he was going through certain emotions and trying to figure things out, which didn't at all answer the question. OK, he said that divorce was, you know, it wasn't in his rear view, but hoes was, which is why his ass is divorced. And I'm thinking those hoes was a cover up, but I'm going to move on. Queen Sheba said, well, who's going to be the wife? Because you said by the end of the year. You was going to propose or be married or whatever, which is six months away. He said that he didn't know who the woman was. She told him to run the roster down. And he said that he didn't uh, talk to that many women. He says that he's a homebody and don't go nowhere. Just a line through the teeth male help him get. 
I wish she would have yanked them bitches the fuck up out his mouth on her way about that marriage. She should have snatched the motherfuckers and sent his ugly ass straight to Dr. Heavenly crying. Queen Sheba told him that he could always go to church because, you know, to find a woman because they got some good women, good women there. And I was like, those women go to church to rebuke the devil, not entertain him. Y'all, she then asked him if, you know, we should be congratulating him. I don't know, you know, uh, I don't know if at that point she was talking about the alleged birth, but she did ask him about that, y'all. Okay. Because it is going around that Ariane has given birth to their second child. That's what people are speculating, okay? Either way, I'll say my congratulations for somebody who deserve it. I don't congratulate clowns because they out there clowning. Martel said, of course, we should congratulate him because everybody needs to be celebrated because the world is tough. <laughs> congratulations for what? For ruining your marriage, abusing tank, eating ass, failing at every business you've ever started? trying to take the kids away from their mother and losing, looking stupid, wearing tight clothes. Why exactly should anybody be celebrating you, Martel? Yeah, the world is tough, but you make it tougher by being stupid. Y'all, he said people face challenges every day and need to be celebrated. His challenges will consist of reading, making money, and accepting the fact that his ex-wife would rather get shitted on by a flock of pigeons and then drug out into the middle of the fucking street by her lace front by them same fucking pigeons and ran the fuck over by a train and a plane at the same damn time before getting back with his sorry motherfucking ass. Queen Sheba then asked him if there were any new additions to the family that we should be expecting. Like the baby Ariane is rumored to have had recently. Martel said like a child you mean? Then he said not now. Of course if it was true you know, he would lie about it because he was adamant about Ariane proving to the people that she was not pregnant. Even had her step back in that lie that she did, calling herself, clearing her name about that sex tape. She was on the phone and then took some steps back to show the people that she was not pregnant. He didn't want her to have the first baby, so he damn sure wouldn't want her to have the second or want people to know about the second. She was probably pregnant and he possibly talked her into having another A.B., he claims that he's having second thoughts about having more kids because his kids are getting older and they're a handful. He having second thoughts, but probably still out there fucking raw. Like babies don't come from fucking raw. This nigga said as long as he can take care of his kids financially, he good. He said he could have about five more kids and still be good. I was like, why the fuck is you sitting up there lying like that, you musty ass crab, when your ex-wife done already spilled the beans about you telling her that you can't get the kids when your time comes to get them because your broke ass ain't got no money. You know what I'm saying? That's the shit I be talking about. Just sitting up there lying like that. Y'all, Queen Sheba was so good. She knew exactly what she was doing when she said, well, if you have five more kids, then you would, that would give you 11. Y'all, I just laughed because she had that grin on her face. Like, watch me get this stupid nigga to tell on himself. Because y'all know that, you know, it was being said. Well, I heard it was said in the documents that he was a father of six. But the gag is that Martel looked like he didn't even know that six plus five equals 11. So Martel said, no, I have five kids now. So she said, well, why do people think that you have six? He, she said, why do people think that you have six? He said that if he did have six kids, we would know about it because he's not hiding a child from anybody. I feel like Marlene should have hid his ass from us, though. He said that him and Ariane's child is attached to his hip every day while his other four are seven days on and seven days off. So I was like, okay, does that mean that him and Ariane now live together? Because when he called himself, he changed it and said, well, almost every day. Y'all, Queen Sheba covered everything because she was like, I'm glad you brought up Knox because some people are insinuating that you are ashamed of him because you wouldn't reveal his birthday, not knowing that Knox is your favorite. She tried to get him to admit that Knox was his favorite, y'all, because y'all know how he be treating Sugar Mama. Y'all, that was such a good way to try to get what she wanted out of him. Knox should be ashamed of him, but he don't know better yet, okay? But anyway, Martel denied being ashamed of Knox. 
And then, you know, uh, Queen Sheba just came right out and asked him, when was Knox's birthday? And Martell said December 17th. And since Martell is such a liar, I'm still going to have to see a birth certificate to believe it. And I still want to see a birth certificate to also confirm that, you know, Knox's name is really Maverick. Because if it was Maverick on the birth certificate, they had to have changed it. Because I remember Ariane saying that her sister helped pick out the name Knox. And her son's name wasn't Maverick and she wasn't going to change it to Maverick. If it was already Maverick from birth, then why would she be saying that she wasn't going to change it? Martell is full of shit. And he was just trying to blend the outside child in on the show with the children he made with his wife. He claims that he doesn't have a favorite. And if he did, it would probably be one of his girls. Well, we know it ain't Sugar Mama because she gave Mel the strength to leave his sorry ass. And it ain't Tank the way that he allegedly went upside his head. And it ain't Maverick because he probably sees him as the child that ruined his marriage. So I guess that leaves Boss Baby and Mariah. I don't know. Next, y'all, she asked him, what was the last, when was the last time he touched bases with his therapist? He said that it was uh, when him and Mel went together two weeks ago. He probably lying, okay? Mel was probably going in and he was probably coming out, but he would call that together with his lying ass. It really don't matter because whether Mel was with him or not, he ain't getting nothing from them sessions but some peppermints that his ass probably stole off the table on his way up out that bitch talking about some trick or treat. Bitch, it ain't Halloween. Put the shit back now, fucking bald head ass thief. Queen Sheba asked him, post-divorce and therapist outside of Mel, what has he learned about himself? I don't know what he learned, but he should have learned, okay? That change needs to happen within him before he be sitting behind bars playing the harmonica, thinking of clever ways of how not to drop the soap. It took him a minute to answer that question, but what he came up with was that when he goes to therapy, it's a way for him to debrief and be receptive to, you know, what the therapist share with him. She said that he feels like, no, Martel said that he feels like the therapist has allowed him to be um, a better person and a better father, but she can't allow him to do shit. And no one tried to stop him from being a better person and a better father. In fact, that's what Mel and everybody else wanted, but he was still so fixated on Mel. Okay. When that shit is over. A person who is genuinely interested in being better ain't got to be forced to go to therapy. I feel like he think ain't nothing wrong with him, especially because his mama co-signs the shit. So again, he didn't answer the question. And that's probably because he ain't really learned shit about himself because he not taking the shit seriously. He said the therapy is healing him. No, what did he say? Yeah, I think he said that the therapy is healing for him or something like that. And it's helping him cope with situations with male differently. But he's still out here doing the same stupid shit, though, like forcing himself on her, popping up when he knows that he's not invited. He claims that he's seeking to be a better person, a better father, a better co-parent. But I don't believe that because his actions don't reflect that. His actions reflect that he's content with being the asshole that he is because he's bitter. Queen Sheba asked him, what can the people expect from him moving forward, forgetting Mel and everybody else? She asked him, what can the people hold him accountable to? I say nothing because Martel don't want nothing to do with accountability. And I predict that we can expect him to be the trash bag that he's been. But his answer to the question was that he was going to be a better person and a better father and was going to accept a little more from people. He said he almost didn't do the interview and was about to let it ride. And he should have because he did nothing but lie like he always do. Okay. The good thing is that Queen Sheba um, did get him to admit some things with his stupid ass. He think he's so smart, but so fucking dumb. Queen Sheba said she almost didn't do the interview too, probably because she knew that he would be hard to stomach. Okay, y'all check this out. He said he going to start letting God handle people because he don't want to go the extra mile to prove people wrong because it takes so much energy for him to do that. I was like, yes, it takes a whole lot of energy to lie. Okay. It takes a whole lot of energy to lie because you have to form the lie. You have to tell the lie and remember the lie. And his ass be struggling with all three. And he can't prove people wrong because the majority of the time, like 99.9999999% of the time, they be right about his ass. I know I do. He said he want to be happy and, you know, he's tired of being angry. So 
we'll see if he does anything to change that. The sad part is that making Mel miserable makes him happy. So like I said, I predict that he is going to continue on with what he's been doing until he's locked up behind bars trying to duct tape his asshole to protect it from his cellmate. Big Dick Willie, okay? So on a deeper level, Queen Sheba said to him, sometimes we come up in the black community so hard and go through shit that we don't even talk about. Then she asked him if he even knew what love truly was, like outside of being married. She asked him if there were any memories that he could reference. And he didn't have to talk about it. He could just say yes or no. He said he knows what love is and what it feels like. And when you love unconditionally, you don't see the person's flaws. You excuse their flaws and kind of like deal with it. When he said that, y'all, I felt that that was him trying to say that Mel didn't love him unconditionally because she left and then continued to deal with him cheating and disrespecting her. He said that unconditional love is I'm going to love you no matter what. And I'm going to be with you no matter what. He said he knows what real love is and what it feels like. And he said that he can't wait to get that. So that last sentence for me really confirmed that he was trying to say that Mel didn't love him unconditionally. And if Mel heard this interview and heard him say that, it probably brought tears to her eyes, in my opinion, because she probably feel that deep in her heart, she did love his ass unconditionally. But how much is a bitch supposed to take? She married him, knowing that there was a chance that he was a cheater. She was warned by Melnika. Mel married him, knowing that he didn't have no money because she was giving him her money. She married him, even though she knew that he was a criminal and came from a family of criminals. Tried to help him get his criminal record cleared, help him get a teaching job so he could walk the straight and narrow instead of the same path as his daddy. Gave him the four beautiful children that he tried to take away from her. Allowed him to use her builder's license. Shared her life, money, and soul with his ass. Gave him 14 years of her life that she can't get back. Gave him years to get his shit together after finding out that he was cheating on her. But he sat there in that interview and acted like Mel didn't give him unconditional love because she left the situation. He put her in so that she could remain sane for her babies, for herself and her babies. Because niggas like Martel, they will drive your ass into the nut house. And as soon as they lock you away in that white jacket, in that padded room, they say mission accomplished. And then they already off to the next victim because they don't give a fuck about nobody but themselves. They don't give a fuck that you have to be in your right mind to raise their babies. Aryan ass headed to the nut house and don't even know it, but you can't save a hoe that don't want to be saved. So y'all Queen Sheba was like, when I tell you y'all, when I tell you she was hitting his ass back to back with the right questions, because there he was acting like the love Mel gave him wasn't shit. So Queen Sheba said, well, you've been there before because you said that you had 85%. He going to put on that goofy ass smile, the one he put on when he get caught in a lie. He was like, look at you. I was like, yeah, look at her catching you in your motherfucking lies. So he said, are you speaking of the love I had for Mel? She said, yes. But to me, it was more so about the love Neil had for him that wasn't reciprocated. Queen Sheba then said something about the people was past him feeling like he had to defend himself. And then he had a mood swing, y'all, and told her that when she say that y'all have moved past that, always reference that on both ends. Queen Sheba said, Mel don't talk about you. And y'all, he got mad. He took a deep exhale, closed his eyes, opened them back up like he was possessed and said, why would you say such a thing? Y'all, him talking about the love he no longer gets from Mel struck a nerve. So he wanted to fight Queen Sheba in that moment, in my opinion, when she said that Mel don't talk about him. And y'all, Mel don't talk about him unless he's online lying about her. And even then, she don't always respond. He always taking jabs at Mel and her parenting, always saying she cheated. So he won't look as bad, just running off at the mouth like a little hurt female. Y'all, that shit was so funny because Queen Sheba knew that he was getting mad and she laughed at his ass. That shit was funny. So when she said, Mel, don't talk about you, he said, why would you say such a thing? As in, why would you tell the truth like that? 
Queen Sheba said, because I listened, because I want to hold her accountable. Martell said she just talked about the situation, and the situation was referencing me. Y'all, he was talking about when Mel got online and addressed the sex tape. See, he want Mel to just shut the fuck up and take whatever he decides to dish out. It's okay for his side bitch to get online and lie, but it's a problem when his ex-wife get online and tell the truth. He want to do his dirt and want Mel to be quiet about it. It's not like she got online and said anything that was untrue. Had he not threatened her with the sex tape, then she wouldn't have mentioned it. Now, would she? He is one dumb ass nigga and he need help. A complete mental case. When I tell you he looks so fucking dumb, it was equivalent to when he said that he don't care if he fucked a thousand women, keep his business in the household. And that's exactly why he don't have a household no more. He probably someone right now asking him to hold a house and not sell it. It's also equivalent to his slow ass baby mama continuously saying, they keep discussing me. They discuss me like she didn't give them something to discuss. So she felt like she could fuck on that lady's husband and have a baby by him, but Mel couldn't talk about it. Two slow peas in a pod. Queen Sheba said that when Mel got on her live, she didn't do shit but confirm that she did some things in her bedroom with her then husband. She said, what did you hear? He said, that's okay. I heard what you heard. He didn't hear shit, but Mel confirming that he indeed threatened her with a sex tape. He mad at Mel for saying that and not mad at himself for doing that. Fucking sicko. Queen Sheba started wrapping the interview up and asked him if there was anything that he wanted to say, whether it was to Mel or wherever. He said, no, all he wanted to say was that he wanted, uh, what did he say? He said that he do want to be in a better place with Mel and how it was imperative for them to be on the same page. He claims that he didn't come on there to bash her, but that's exactly what he came to do because he was mad that she confirmed that he did threaten her with that sex tape. He felt like she should have just shut the fuck up since it, you know, since he threatened her last year with his stupid ass. This nigga said he barely wanted to defend himself, but that's exactly what he did this interview for, to defend himself against the truth with lies. It's not like he got paid to do the interview. Queen Sheba said she didn't pay him. He was mad because Mel did her live and now he had his, um, PR reach out to Queen Sheba so, you know, he could have another opportunity to bash Mel. But unlike Carlos Queen, okay, Queen Sheba didn't allow him to do that. And that's why he mad. Y'all, so Queen Sheba said, uh, why they feel like somebody talking to you in those earbuds, as in Carlos King, maybe was telling him what to say in those earbuds. Martel laughed, which told me that it just may have been some truth to that. He said they saying that probably because Carlos went on tour with him and he went on tour with him because he don't like interviewing. He claimed that he don't like to interview, but was out here begging for interviews, I guess, you know, until he kept getting tripped up in the interviews. If he didn't like the interview, then why ask Queen Sheba for an interview for an opportunity to bash Mel? But he want to lie and say that him and Mel are in a good place and in the same breath say he wants them to be in a better place. Like, dude, which one is it? Liar. So y'all, Martel said Carlos only went on tour with him um, because uh, he don't like interviewing. And then uh, what else did he say? And he said the only reason he is on TV is because he asked Mel one day what she wanted to do. And she said TV. And he claims that he had to connect, which was Carlos King. But how does an ATM thief slash special ed teacher slash uh, whatever else have a tv producer connect you know what i'm saying were him and carlos connected in another way i'm just saying either way he ended up on the show queen sheba asked him if carlos was his manager and for some reason he was annoyed with that question he got a little attitude i feel like he either bipolar or something in my opinion <laughs> or carlos is really his manager and he mad that the people may be on to it he claimed that, you know, the people will say anything and that Carlos is to him what he is to everybody on the show, which is the executive producer of the show. Nothing more, nothing less. But I believe he did say that they were friends, special friends, I would say. If anybody, you know what I'm saying, will say anything, it'll be him with his lying ass. But anyway, they love trying to discredit bloggers, which makes them only work harder. OK, to thrash their asses with the truth. And then when, you know, they hit them with the truth, 
they want to talk about suing. Okay. Just crazy. Y'all, this guy said that Carlos just want to produce a good show and he want to be a part of a good show, but he wasn't going to continue to sacrifice his family. And that's the part that gets me because, you know, that's him blaming him losing his family on the show. He sacrificed his family by continuing to cheat on his wife, not by coming onto the show. I guess he still believed that Mill wouldn't have left if they weren't on the show. Then he said that he wasn't going to sacrifice uh, he wasn't going to be sacrificing his children for no amount of money. But I feel like that was his way of saying discreetly sold to the highest bidder. Okay. Queen Sheba said, why now? Cause they, the kids been on TV. So why pull the plug now? Cause he mad that his illegitimate child can't film. So he going to try to stop the others from filming. Probably. He said it was because one day his daughter said to him, we saw you in a hotel with a lady. I was like, first of all, nigga, that shit is old before Mel divorced your ass. And that was what, like three fucking years ago? Them kids done been on there since then, you fucking liar. You mad because your badass son can't come on there to film, period. He's not about to be punching on them Eminem kids like you allegedly did, Tank. Get the fuck over it. So when his daughter allegedly told him that, he said that he looked over at Mel and was like, what is she talking about? He should have looked at himself because it's not like she was lying. He'd be mad about people finding out his truth instead of being mad at himself because it's truth. He brought up this old shit just so he could have another opportunity to bash Mel because he said that Mel showed their daughter pictures of him at the hotel with Ariane, I guess. And you know the shit is old because the nigga don't go nowhere with Ariane in public now. Mel could, you know, show shit that didn't exist. Okay. Not, not show shit. Mel couldn't show shit that didn't exist. Why did a picture of him with another woman exist while he was married? He should be more concerned with that. At least she didn't tell their daughter that his stupid ass was sitting in the car with a walkie talkie getting ready to help his uncle and his ride or die ass wife steal a fucking ATM machine. You know what I'm saying? Just Ugh, I can't stand him trying to help his uncle and his uncle's wife allegedly steal a fucking ATM machine. They didn't have no money, so they couldn't make a withdrawal. So they figured they just steal the whole fucking machine, huh? How dreadful. So y'all, my tail gonna say, I don't mean to bash you, Melody, which meant that that was exactly what he was meaning to do because he got upset with Queen Sheba when she said, well, just leave it alone then because she didn't want him bashing Mel on her platform and that pissed him off. He was like, nope. So Queen Sheba said, well, okay, well, just know I'm coming back. I guess that meant you say some shit about Mel that ain't true and I'm going to call your ass out on it. <coughs> Excuse me. Y'all. Martell's whole face changed. That nigga is deranged. Ain't no woman safe around him. In my opinion, this nigga said, why you say that? No, what what did he say? Why you say it like that? You against me? I said, what? That was the wackiest shit ever. The wackiest shit ever. Because she... Y'all have to see it to believe it. Okay? It was like some shit an unaliver would say on a Lifetime movie right before he butchered his victim. That shit was crazy. Oh, you against me, bitch? Yes, nigga, now untie me. Y'all, his face kept going from smiling to serious to upset to worried. I was like, what in the world is going on? She said, I'm trying to keep it positive. That's all. He said, well, you said you'd come back. What do you mean by that? I think she said she meant that she was going to have questions pretty much if he got to saying some shit about Mel that wasn't true. So Martel said that he was going to be transparent if she asked questions, but Mel had shown you know, their daughter pictures of him in a hotel with somebody. And he was like, I said, I can't believe that. And I'm sure Mel and, you know, their daughter couldn't believe it either. He said since then, he'd been saying that he was going to get his kids up off the show. And they stayed on there three extra years. Would you look at that? Then he brought up that lady that used to counsel Mel and the kids, the one who had something to say when Mel no longer wanted her services. He brought up how the lady asked the kids, who did they like to be around? And the kids must have said Mel because believe me, you know what I'm saying? When I say that, had those kids say they enjoyed being around him more, he wouldn't have had no problem with that. Okay? No problem at all. 
y'all queen she will let him know that he was on some bullshit because she said i think what you're referring to happened in season one or two i said thank you so why the fuck are you bringing it up now <sighs> now nigga it's like this is season six so you telling me that you recently decided that you didn't want the kids on tv because of some shit that happened five fucking seasons ago you're fucking lying I have my theory on why the kids can't film no more. I feel like it could be because he just mad because Knox can't film. And also because he don't want the world to witness his kids getting tired of his stupid ass. Y'all, he said that what, what happened in season one was one of the things, one of the reasons why he wanted the kids off TV. I also believe that it's a possibility that after he recorded Mariah saying that shit about her mama, and played it for the world to hear. Mel probably had her attorney mention that to the judge. And Martell probably had his attorney mention that the kids were on TV being asked certain questions. He didn't want them to be asked on TV because he was scared of what their answer was going to be. So the judge probably just said neither one of them could put them on TV or online until they were old enough to decide for themselves if that's where they wanted to be. But he going to say to Queen Sheba that he glad the judge saw it his way. Because he always want to appear to be victorious. When he do nothing but lose. So Queen Sheba said, I don't know, Martell. I read those papers and I think the judge did what she needed to do. And y'all, Martell got mad because Queen Sheba didn't fall for his lies and she challenged him. He was like, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Like, I dare you not believe the bullshit that is coming out of my mouth. She said, that's a blanket statement. The judge saw it my way. Martell got mad and going to say, what are you alluding to? She said there were some decisions that were rendered by the judge to bring both of you together. He said, of course, she's the mother. I'm the father. We have to come together. So what are you talking about? Queen Sheba said, that's why you have to clarify because that's a blanket statement because people don't know what you're talking about when you say that, uh, when you, when you say what you said, well, he was, he said, well, we were talking about the kids, but Martell want people to think that he won that case y'all. That's what it is. So Martell said, um, uh, what did the judge not see my way? The only thing I didn't get was the $28,000, I guess, for his legal fees because he was sanctioned for not going to therapy. I said, nigga, you wanted to know all of Mel's whereabouts, who she was fucking on on the day she had the kids. You wanted all of her financial records. You wanted custody of the kids. You wanted child support and you wanted your legal fees paid and your bitch ass got none of that. So that means you fucking lost. The judge sent your ass on your way with, I believe, an order for a psych evaluation and an order to go get your ass some counseling because the judge probably knew that the psych evaluation was going to come back positive for crazy. OK, y'all, he told Queen Sheba that whatever she wanted to talk about, they could talk about and he wasn't going to lie. And I was like, boy, bad. that's all the fuck you do is lie. He said the judge saw most things his way, 99 percent his way. She said, what do you mean your way? What did you, what did you need to go your way? What did you need to go your way? He said he didn't want the kids on social media. They not on social media. He said that he didn't want the kids on TV. So they not on TV. He said the uh, motion that Mel filed against him didn't go her way. Y'all, this is the same nigga that lied online saying that he was winning in court. And Mel came out and said that court hadn't even started yet. Okay. So he was just lying his ass off. Y'all, Queen Sheba wasn't letting him get away with anything. I was so proud of this interview. She said, I didn't see Mel ask for anything against you. I saw you ask for full custody of them kids, though. Martell said that was in the beginning. She said, I still did not see Melody ask anything to be inflicted on you by the courts. I said, you better call him out on his lies, Queen Sheba. Martell said, okay, but anyway... She was like, no, is that fair? He said, you can call Mel and ask her if she filed um, <clears throat> four different motions. She said, I don't even know your number. He always trying to get somebody to call Mel. He said that in the last interview as well. Like, Mel ain't about to pick up the cosign on your lies, especially when the lies are about her. He said that there were four motions filed against him, and they all went his way. Queen Sheba said, I saw it different. And that pissed him off. He said, what did you see different? She said, Mel didn't ask anything of your line as ma'am. Well, 
she didn't add all the extra in there. I said the extra, but you get the picture. She said, Mel didn't ask anything of you. However, you asked plenty of from her. Queen Sheba said, I saw that you were denied custody. I saw that you were denied custody. You were denied child support and other ones. You were also denied attorney fees. Y'all, he couldn't do nothing but sit there and look stupid because Queen Sheba was hitting him with the facts. She wasn't going to allow him to push false narratives. Okay? That he wasn't going to be able to back up. She wasn't Carlos. She wasn't about to let him come on her platform and push false narratives without being able to back them up. She asked every question that needed to be asked, called him out every time that he needed to be called out and stated facts when his ass didn't have none. I think she did a great job. Martel hate people questioning him and challenging him. He said, I told you three times already I was sanctioned for not going to therapy. So because of that, I couldn't get my attorney fees paid and I couldn't get child support. So it don't matter why those things didn't go your way. The only thing that matters is that it didn't go your way. But you up here saying everything went your way, which shows that you are a liar. She said, you remember when we first talked and you wanted to talk about this? Well, what did I say? What did I say about talking about child's custody cases? He said he didn't remember. She said, I said that it wasn't a good move and it could backfire. Y'all, Queen Sheba was cold with it. She was ready for his ass because that opened the door for her to let him know that nigga, I saw what you did last summer. Winter, spring, summer, fall, wherever the fuck it was. I was like, nigga, yes. So let the record show that you abused your fucking son. Martel said, my thing is, whatever the truth is, let that be out. I don't care what backfires. It doesn't matter. Knowing that he was lying because when she was hitting him with the truth, he was getting mad at her. Had they been in the same room during that interview, he probably would have tried to choke the shit up out of Queen Sheba. Queen Sheba said, just tell me if I was fair. I said, we shouldn't talk about this. I said, we should keep it positive. We should keep it about you and what you're doing. So was I fair? See, Martel didn't come there to keep it about him. He saw that Mel got on her live to confirm what he actually did. And he got mad because she wasn't quiet about it because narcs want to, you know, they want you to be silent about the abuse that they inflict upon you so that the good guy image they're trying to push is not ruined. Okay. Only no one thinks that Martel is a good guy besides these dumbass bitches, you know, who walking around a few crayons short of a full box. But anyway, Martel told her that he don't like he don't really like doing interviews that much. But now that he was there and she had the information, you know, and he felt like if she didn't want to discuss it, she should have told his PR that. And it's like, dummy, she just sat up there and said a few times that she said that she don't think y'all should bring up the child custody case because. She saw the documents, bruh. She know the truth. And the truth don't make you look good. Therefore, she was helping your ass out by saying, look, let's just keep it positive and talk about you. Because if we get to talking about this case, we're going to talk about the facts, bitch. We're going to talk about the facts, not no fake ass bullshit that you done pulled about your ass to make you look good and make Mel look like the demon. Because I saw those documents. I saw what Tank said you did to him. That was pretty much what Queen Sheba said. As far as I'm concerned. We all know Tank ain't lying on his daddy or his mama. He ain't going to lie on his daddy or his mama. I don't give a fuck what Martel say. At least that's what I believe. Okay. We believe that Tank is a good kid. And he's very articulate. And if he says something happened. It motherfucking happened. As far as we're concerned. Okay. And the crazy part of this, well, one, okay, one of the crazy parts, because there were many, this nigga was on here defending the shit out of his baby mama, when, but when it came to his actual baby, his son, Tank, oh, Tank was a liar, pretty much. Tank was being manipulated. That shit he said happened didn't really happen. It's easy for a child to be manipulated. This we know, bitch, because you stay manipulating your kids, and you know you stay manipulating your kids, which is why you would try to sit there and say that Mel was manipulating them. Trying to project the shit you be doing onto her. Trying to say that Mel was manipulating Tank into saying that he abused him when he didn't. Nigga, you are disgusting. Okay? And to the crazy bitch that came through here yesterday saying that Martel was a good man and put some hearts behind that shit. Bitch, you are sad. 
and pathetic and disgusting. And you really need to seek help. You lucky that the only thing I did was block your ass. You're not even worth my energy. So I'm not going to curse you out. Because I know your bread ain't done. I know you are a few fries short of a Happy Meal. I know that you ain't the sharpest motherfucking knife in the draw. And damn sure, not the brightest light in Home Depot, bitch. But continuing on with this interview, Queen Sheba said, it's not that I didn't want to discuss it. She just felt like she shouldn't because it could backfire, meaning on his ass. So she gave him recommendations, okay? She wasn't going to sit there like Carlos did and just look at him lie and make up his own truths. Y'all, Martel going to lie and say, I want to put it out there. I want the people to know the truth. No, you don't, ma'am. You want people to know lies, which is why you tell them. And then get mad when they don't believe the lies. You know what I'm saying? Just fucking crazy. If he want people to know the truth, then why did he threaten his ex-wife with revenge porn when she got online to tell the truth? Why did he tell Mel to keep their troops in their household? Why do he go on tours lying about his ex-wife? You know what I'm saying? If he want the people to know the truth, the truth is his ass hate the truth because the truth hurts and the truth makes him look like the demon that he's going around trying to convince the people that he's not. Y'all, he said that their records are public records, so people can go and pull the truth about everything. So my question is, with that being said, why the fuck do you insist on lying? Just like Stormy asked. It's public record that she lost a lawsuit against Apex funding for, I believe, $1.7 million. But she going to get down in a content creator's comments. I believe it was Brown Skin Girl's comments that she got down in and pretty much said that she was lying. No, bitch, you're lying. And the lawsuits continue because another lawsuit against your ass has surfaced with your eight-figure ass. Girl, bye. Your ass probably owe eight figures right about now. But anyway... Stormy is a whole nother video and trust me, I'm gonna get to it. But anyway, back to Martel's old stupid, crazy line ass. He said that everything he said is the truth and he has no shame in none of the things the people will pull from the courts. He said, yeah, I didn't want to go to therapy. Therefore, the judge said I couldn't get child support or my legal fees paid the $28,000. But he was saying everything went his way though. That don't sound like everything went his way. Queen Sheba said that you know, she tries to be fair and that she knows that it's tough because people have a lot of questions. Martel said, I wouldn't say that it's tough because if I'm coming to the table, being open and transparent about whatever, which he's not, but he said that if he's doing that, he said they can talk about whatever. He said the only time it gets tough is when she starts talking about relationships. It's tough for him when people start talking to him about relationships because he don't want to be held accountable for fucking heels up for another one that has for another one that his ass didn't even want to be in once his marriage was over. Queen Sheba said to him, you took me through a tailspin case. Cause why? No, she was like, you took me through a, a tailspin because she was like, why is Melody having to file motions? If y'all are co-parenting well, like your ass say, you know what I'm saying? But you said we can come back to it so we can come back to it because Martel told her when she go and find the facts or whatever or documents, he'll do another interview with her. Thing is, she's not about to sit with his ass for another two hours and watch him try to lie about shit when she has been privy to the documents. Martel said that he's trying to pay for the records right now for every time they went to court. Martel, Martel said, um, Mel would tell you that she filed four motions against me. He said abuse claims like four times. Queen Sheba said, I don't know why she would tell me anything. He was like, what are you, a blogger or something? She said, yeah. But Martel, let me ask you something because that makes no sense. Just like the rest of the shit that comes out of his mouth. She said, have I ever reached out to you before today? He said, no, I don't know you. She said, right. So why would I go reach out to anybody, you know, on the cast to verify anything? He said, oh, so you don't know Melody? She said, I know Mel because I've interviewed her. I know her just to the level I know you. He said, oh, so that's all y'all ever done is the interview and that was it? She said, absolutely. He said, oh, I didn't know. My bad. I didn't know if y'all were friends. So is that why he chose her to do the interview with? Because he thought that she was Mel's friend and wanted a one-on-one -on -one opportunity to try to turn her against Mel like he tried to do her other friends? She said, I've interviewed a list of reality stars and I don't know any of them. 
Y'all, to wrap this up, he said that he didn't want nobody on Mel's side to be against him and nobody on his side to be against Mel, knowing damn well that he was lying because that's exactly what he wanted. He wanted everybody to be against Mel. He came to that interview thinking that he was about to turn Queen Sheba against Mel. He thought that they were friends, that Queen Sheba and Mel were friends. That nigga is the devil. He did the same shit with Dr. Heavenly, tried to turn her against Mel in that interview that he did with her. The interview that he begged for, by the way, after he had seen that Dr. Heavenly had interviewed Mel and they were cool with each other. So he wanted to ruin that. Once Mel left him, that was one of his missions to turn everybody against her and not with the truth, but with lies. When Funky Dineva was interviewing uh, Mel, Martel kept calling Funky Dineva's phone to try to interrupt their, interrupt their interview and then tried to get Funky to interview him, I believe. Just a fucking clown. Then he saw Tasha K interview Mel. And then he went and sent his baby mama to interview with Tasha K so that she could try to make him look good and make Mel look like the bad person in the situation. But that just shows how dumb he is because how the fuck you think you're about to send your seven years of slave ass mistress into an interview to convince the people that the married nigga she was fucking on and had a baby with and carried on a multi-year affair with was the good guy in the situation and his wife was the one who was fucked up. Just a complete clown. And Ariana is an even bigger clown for letting him send her clown ass off like that. Y'all, she asked him if there was anything he wanted to leave the audience with. I said nothing but lies, girl. Nothing but lies. Nothing but lies. And we rebuked them, just like we rebuked his ass. She gave him a chance to talk about his suit collection with his twin, Miguel Wilson. So he started telling her about the black tie event Miguel threw introducing his suit, Mattel's suit collection or whatever that I don't give a fuck about. But um, he said that the full suit collection will be out in a few months. So I guess he going to keep doing the interviews until then to try to reshape the people's minds about him. But it ain't going to work. He might as well just sit back, be quiet, and let the suits do what they're going to do, which is nothing in my opinion. But again, he's now catering to the men because he knows the women, well, the smart ones anyway, don't want nothing to do with him or anything that he's selling. So these trash ass men will probably support him because that's what they do. Like I said before, they support each other, especially in their bullshit. A lot of them do anyway. But y'all, that's going to be all for this video. I hope y'all enjoyed the recap. Again, I think that Queen Sheba did a great job. She smiled at Martel because he was a clown, okay? She was professional. She didn't attack Martel. She didn't give him any room to be able to say that she was unfair to him. She let him speak even allow him to promote the business ventures that he had going on. But what she did not do was allow him to use her platform to lie without calling him out on those lies. And she did not allow him to use her platform to bash mail because that's for sure what he came to do. She was ready for Martel from all angles, asked every question that needed to be asked. Okay. In this interview, she got him to admit to threatening mail with the tape, which is a fucking felony. Got him to admit to having the kids around his whores. Found out that the judge said that he couldn't get child support, which is probably one of the reasons why he was no longer interested in suing Mel for custody, other than the fact that his ass couldn't afford the lawyers, but he could have borrowed that from Carlos. He could have borrowed that money from Carlos since they're good, you know, such good Judies. But I'm sure he was no longer interested in seeking custody once the judge said that he couldn't receive child support. The interview was long, y'all, but I pushed through for y'all because y'all know it's hard for me to stomach Martel. All right. So y'all enjoy. Y'all take care and I'll chat with y'all in the next one.